We are a serious, curated podcast. Yeah. It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. In this episode, we're going to talk about how fast The Flash is losing directors. Who, faster than an, than an analogy I can't think of. Than a movie losing directors, that's right. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about that Sandman adaptation coming to Netflix. Mm, all right. It's going to be pricey. Hopefully it doesn't put us to sleep. Uh, what about that success of the new Spider-Man movie, huh? Mm, like, I heard that. I heard that there was a new Spider-Man movie out. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've heard. You've heard correctly, <laughs> and more. And more. We are we are definitely one hundred percent in the summer now, for sure. We've had two Marvel movies. Uh, we've we've seen like a Hobbs and Shaw trailer that pretty much shows you every action scene in the movie. They've already teed up the next Jumanji movie. I've never felt more like I'm in the summer. And then on top of that, we get two earthquakes out here in yeah. Los Angeles. So I am just, uh, I'm steeped in Mother Nature right now. Oh, man. I mean, it is it is warm and humid here um, so much I'm inside today. I was like, do I have to go outside? No. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm very much uh, away from that Mother Nature life, Mike. Uh, it's been one of those um, weekends where, you know, you're just like, you don't remember anything you did because... Uh, every every like half hour, I look at my phone. And I'm like, I'm gonna figure out what I want to do at Comic Con because <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Getting yeah, there. And, they and it's ju- so close. They just uh, released the schedules this week, so we now have the in, uh, entire int- itinerary for. Hall H, you know, what's going to be the heavy hitters at Comic-Con, uh, the smaller panels that are going to be at the convention, the show floor. This is a big deal. We always talk about Comic-Con a lot on the show, but it's a bigger deal this year because both of your illustrious co-hosts are going to the convention, and I'm extremely excited to see how Chris compares it to other conventions that he's yes. been to uh, because he's been to the big one in Chicago. He's been to smaller ones. Like, what? what's the smallest comic book convention you've ever been to? Um, I want to say five years years ago or so there was one in indianapolis in a hotel like little conference room <laughs> and i don't remember what it was called but a friend of the show um best man my name patrick he went with me uh and uh it was a very interesting experience because i got accused of stealing a movie from a, a booth of these guys <laughs> who bootleg movies oh really <laughs> yeah and he was like open your bag or, and it wasn't even the guy who owned the booth the guy next door was like open your bag what do you got and i'm like i'm not i'm not letting you into my stuff like get, get away from me <laughs> And the guy who owned the booth was like, no, nah, go ahead. I was like, okay, it's weird. But it was like, literally, you know, like when you walk into like a small conference room at like a hotel, mm-hmm. it was yeah. that, that was it. That was as big as it was. Yeah. Not to knock small comic book conventions at all, but maybe that experience was pretty, pretty weird. But I like the idea that you're going to go like from the smallest to the biggest. You'll have like this whole range well, of experiences of conventions. I love it. Well, this weekend, uh, next, actually next Saturday, I'm going to Frankfurt City Comic Con in Frankfurt, Kentucky, which is the capital of Kentucky, but one of the smallest smallest cities like i've ever been <laughs> but um it's 20 dollars to get in the door if that tells you how small this is wow uh they only take cash they don't even take card that's how not into it they are so they don't uh, want the irs knowing about this convention <laughs> yeah so we're literally gonna walk in at like 10 in the morning next saturday um absorb what we can for a few hours and, and call it a day and literally three days later i'll be at the biggest one in the country so <laughs> it's uh it's gonna be quite the roller coaster ride across that weekend Yeah, we'll do our best to send some dispatches out over social media to let you guys know what we're up to. But we're looking forward to coming back, uh, recording in person, face-to-face, our annual Comic-Con wrap-up episode. So you guys can get all the nitty-gritty of everything that you may have missed, all all of the little stuff, all the little fun bits of swag we got to pick up. So stay tuned for that. Yes, I'm very excited. Uh, And then we'll do our first, uh, not next week, but in two weeks, we'll do our first recording live together in person uh because we've never done that before so i'm uh, <laughs> very excited for that experience but um mike what have you been up to this weekend if i can't remember what i did what, what did you actually do <laughs> well uh my wife and i have been going back and kind of catching some kind of uh quote-unquote classic movies that we've missed over the years 
and one film that's kind of eluded us is uh, Weekend at Bernie's. So this is a, uh, something that has been in pop culture for a really long time now. And we, we knew the exact premise of this film. Well, it was two guys trying to make a, an old dude look like he was alive. Uh, so basically we watched yeah. the movie and we got all the context of why. And uh, I wasn't expecting this movie to be as sloppy as it was. It feels weird being critical of like a 1980s just like slapstick like like uh, boner comedy almost, but uh, it, it, it's just kind of like, all right. I, I thought Weekend, Ber- at Weekend at Bernie's might hold up a little bit more to all of the uh, all of the hype over the decades, but um, well, there, I think there, the, was, the problem, there was some funny jokes here and there. The problem is you got to watch the second one. I'm, I, I, <laughs> I can tell you Weekend at Bernie's 2 up and down way better than I ever could the first well, one. That, that's the funny thing is we knew that there was a second one, and but I had a feeling it probably wasn't as you know well received as the first one, just basing on the fact that they made a sequel to this concept. So we went on IMDb and we read the, like the log line and we saw that Voodoo was involved and we're just like, what is going on here? So we watched the trailer for the second one and I looked over to my wife and I was like, why does the second one look way more entertaining than the one we just watched? probably because it gets going like it took forever for them to start moving around this dead body like i didn't need all of this like little character build up all of these uh these new york uh, guys so oh uh, yeah well yeah exactly because you've already done that in the first one so by the second one he's already like boom you know what you know what you're getting into when you're doing weekend at bernie's too <laughs> Which they could have should have called the next weekend at bernie's because you know uh, got the whole friday thing that would have been better yeah um, so a, a very uh, I don't know if I can recommend a weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> well, if you get a chance to watch the second one some point, Mike, I gotta I gotta know your your feelings when you watch All that right. one. So because... the official superhero slate recommendation is Weekend at Bernie's two, not the original first weekend yeah. at Bernie's. Um, yeah. Another thing that came out this weekend that that is kind of uh, adjacent to the things that we talk about on the show, uh, but we usually don't do any sort of official reviews for it, is the third season of Stranger Things. I Mm -hmm. thought we would just bring it up for a second since we went out of our way to try new Coke on the microphone. We did. For (laughs) for the podcast. And um, you've only seen the first episode of Stranger Things, uh, season three. Uh, We finished all eight. And I was actually surprised how much new Coke does pop up to the point where you're just kind of like, okay, Coca-Cola definitely wanted to see a return on their investment in this season of Stranger Things uh, 3. So it, it doesn't get at any point too egregious, but it, at a point it gets a little bit distracting, that specific sponsorship. Also, on top of all of the other brands that you see, just even the first episode that you were watching. Well, I will tell you, the brands don't bother me, and, and Mike knows exactly what got on my nerves the most in that first episode <laughs> this this show guess what year it set in 1985 and by god they remind you you're in the 80s the whole way through because they will play every scene every scene that will cut from one song that was big in the 80s to the next one and i don't know if it gets easier after this or and i'm not saying it's bad either but like they remind you you're in the 80s with all these hit songs i will i will tell you this the pop culture references get more and more expensive because some of the stuff like they're licensing in the later episodes i'm like only netflix streaming money could pay for the rights for them to show this much of this very famous like 1980s movie uh, later in the film so uh, or later in the season so maybe when chris finishes it maybe we'll talk about maybe we'll tack a little spoiler cast on the end of one of our episodes in the next couple yeah. weeks and, and we're not opposed to watching it we we just um like i said we had people over this weekend and we don't have netflix so we got to find another way to watch it mm. um but you know it, it's we're not uh, opposed to watching it, so we're just gonna not be the i will we'll probably have it done by next week if i was a bet man but it's it's not something you know oh my god we have to watch it immediately uh but we are watching it just yeah i mean because there was it. there was two very big things in the pop culture this week besides people uh roundhouse kicking bottle caps off of uh bottles which i just i don't understand uh <laughs> but but film wise we had spider-man and we had stranger things we did, and both of them are, you know, huge right now. I mean, everything had a cross promotion in in terms of video games with this, especially uh, Spider Man Far From Home, which we just did our review on uh, what Friday. I mean, it was later in in the week, but uh, we we got it done, and that review episode is now live if people want to go listen to it. Yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Yep, uh, you can check that out. Uh, don't listen to it if you haven't watched it, even though we tell you when spoilers happen. 
some people just t- zone out, and the next thing you know, they're getting all the spoilers uh, for this. And, and, you know, following Endgame, this movie's got several spoilers in it. <laughs> uh, but overall, Mike, how did you feel about Far From Home? A great Great film. I loved it. <laughs> it's hard to really not dig uh, these new Spider-Man movies, uh, especially when it's the same writer, same director, I believe. So you're just getting more of the same from Homecoming. Uh, Tom Holland's a great Spider-Man. I love all of his his friends. I love his cast of characters. Some uh, some great uh, twists and turns throughout the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, great Spider-Man action. I, it, I love like kind so of much. like this. I, I love this limitation that they've put on the character so far, where they're just like, let's try to make the best Spider-Man movie we can without putting him in skyscrapers in downtown New York, because that's just the, such the iconic setting for Spider-Man and where he really thrives is these big buildings in the city. So they've just done everything but do that. Like, bitch, mm-hmm. he's been to space. He's been everywhere else. He's been all across the world he's been in the suburbs he you know he's been on spaceships uh other planets uh you know he was snapped so he could have been somewhere in another dimension so he's been everywhere but those big buildings and i love how they're able to make that work so uh looking forward to where the character is going to go and it's an easy it's an easy recommend this is it's just more more great stuff from the mcu what and we can't complain yeah, and, and you know, two, two, no, three years ago, no, two years ago, Mike was saying Spider Man was his favorite movie of that year. I have uh, been spoiled with Spider Man movies these last three years, man. Five years. Sp- You've had Spider Man in five years in a row now. Yeah, I mean, Spider Verse, him popping up in other films. It's a great time to be a Spider Man fan. It, it it is. Uh, so I was. Um, I, I I agree with Mike. It's a great thing. I I liken it a lot to European Vacation. Uh, you know, um, they, they obviously in the trailers they they go to Europe. They're venturing around, dealing with the elementals and meeting Mysterio. And there's a lot of really good scenes and interactions here. The characters and their chemistry really come to life. Uh, I feel we get some more in this one actually than we did in the last one. Um, and it's just a, a whole different a whole different Marvel movie that we haven't gotten. You know, in the past 11 years, where it's just uh, kids going on a vacation to Europe and. Uh, that one of those kids just happens to be a spider dude. So, um, I, I, I'd rec- easy recommend. I mean, if you haven't seen it by now, uh, you know, y- you should go as soon as you can and, and hit it in theaters. Well, 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 it's still good. Well, it's still swinging. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, a, a pun intended, but, um, I, we, we always like to do the box office numbers. We, we kind of did it a little bit, um, uh, on, on Friday, but it was, we've had a full week since Tuesday, uh, this movie is a over five hundred million dollars by the end of the day today, and I think that's just a huge number. Yeah, it looks like worldwide it's at five hundred and eighty million dollars. Uh, you definitely get an advantage of coming out on a Tuesday, so it doesn't look like they were looking to break any like weekend opening records. Uh, uh, of course, they got that like Tuesday opening headline, which is not that big of a deal if you really look into it. But uh, overall, this movie is just going to make a lot of money. It, it like. This movie is like the perfect example of more of the same for Marvel. You're getting uh, good quality, and you're getting a lot of return at the box office. Uh, so they this one is just a textbook knock out of the park. It's almost hard to to go in and analyze it, you know, because this is this is just what happens when the MCU is firing off on all cylinders. It when when it just works. Like, uh, I, I didn't hear any drama surrounding this movie. Not saying other Marvel movies have deserved any drama that swirls around it, but, you know, this is an example of uh, no drama, lots of money, good film. So mm-hmm. that that's going to return a lot of money for you. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it, over the weekend, it, it, it's number one, of course. No one who's not seen this. If you're not watching this, you're watching Toy Story 4, apparently, in, in the thing. But, um but yeah, I just, I mean, it's, it's doing well. I think it's gonna, it's on its way to being the first Spider-Man movie to cross $1 billion, they said. Um, uh-huh. And, you know, I, I actually didn't believe that the other ones hadn't crossed a billion yet. That was, I guess, the, the biggest surprise for me. I didn't, uh-huh. I thought maybe Spider-Man 3 had, even though people don't like it in retrospect, a lot of people still saw it when it came out. Yeah, I think I remember that movie for having a really big opening weekend. That mm-hmm. that film did crank in a lot of money on that first weekend. But yeah, I guess uh, back then those box office dollars didn't add up as quickly, especially because the ticket prices were um, a lot smaller. Yeah, yeah, and even I thought Homecoming would do um, would have done something close, but it's still even lower than Spider Man Three at the end of the day. So um, yeah, I just uh, I, yeah, I, that's that's good for it. 
And if you like it, the suits we've seen in the trailers are available on the PS4 Spider-Man game for free. If you go up yeah. it. I gave it a shot. I swung around a little bit. Man, the game is just so fun. It's just a nice reminder to jump back in and go, yeah, this mm-hmm. is really fun. This is a great a great web-slinging experience. I haven't played any of the DLC yet, which is good because it gives me something else to go back in and do eventually. Uh, and it really makes me excited for a sequel. I really want to know what they're going to do with that game in the future. Mm. Mike says eventually, but I don't think he'll ever go back into it with the <laughs> DLC. He keeps saying hey, that. but you know. I'm a man of my word of not doing things. Exactly. It's he's gonna be he's gonna be like, why didn't I do this when it first came out? Whenever he plays it, it's gonna blow. You know, his mind. if I wait long enough, things either become free or even cheaper. So sometimes my strategy works. Yeah, and it's it, they do they do go down over time, but it's it's still a good time. I also have a little thing. People keep trying to tell me that Spider Man's owned by Sony. He he's not. Does everyone realize this? Right, like. Disney owns Marvel. Marvel owns Spider Man. The movie rights are licensed to Sony. Yeah, he's leased out like a car. Yeah, like <laughs> all the toys, Disney. All the all the extra money, all the 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 Disney uh, Disneyland and Universal stuff. That's all back to Marvel at the end of the day. Like they're just yeah, like I said, he, Sony's just borrowing him for the movies, and yeah. even then they're like, hey, have him back and just give us some money. Yeah. The only the only thing that worries me about this just uh, windfall of success for Sony when it comes to Spider-Man, it's just I'm always worried about the, the failure point of just one cocky executive. You know, it's just going to take somebody high, just takes one person high enough over at Sony to get too big for their britches and go, we don't need Marvel anymore, let's just go make our own Spider-Man movies and not give them like any of the not give them like any of uh, the success that we're making because now uh, they we use them to build him up and now we're just gonna take him back and just give them the middle finger. I hope that doesn't happen and no one over there is uh, naive enough to think that they can do that because it's obvious that Marvel was the key to make uh, Spider-Man successful at Sony again and not just um, and not just financially because you know Sony has arguably made uh, financially successful Spider-Man movies without Marvel, but uh, if you've got to think the long term, I mean Marvel Studios is going to be the key to cranking out Tom Holland Spider-Man movies at quality with high revenue for uh, a long period of time, so uh, I just I just hope nobody gets, uh, gets a little too greedy over there at Sony. I, d- I don't think they will. I mean, I, I'm sure their contracts are pretty locked into place, like, look, we're just, you get the characters you get to do what you want, because after the, ama- the, the, the spectacular failures of the Amazing Spider-Man and then ultimately even worse the Amazing Spider-Man 2, critically and financially, they're like, well, this this was probably the better deal. Because, I mean, it, it took, what, all of two years to get Spider-Man into Marvel? They're like, Here's, he's in Civil War now. Uh, uh-huh. And everyone immediately forgot Andrew Garfield was Spider-Man, like, right away. So <laughs> um, that's perfectly perfectly fine with me. So uh, go see Spider-Man. That's, that's the goal here. And if you uh, haven't seen Andrew, in game, uh, you're well behind the times. I think everyone has seen this movie, uh, but the just in case we'll be vague here. The aftermath of In Game, everything that's happened and going forward, the uh, conundrum, quote unquote, will likely to be addressed. Meaning they don't leave stones unturned, per Chris Evans. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of see. Like In Game doesn't give you the ramifications of everything, and that's fine. So we're going to be exploring that probably throughout Phase Four. And uh, I'm excited to see where that goes. <laughs> is uh, is don't leave any st- no stones left unturned? Is that a double entendre for the word stones? I believe uh, it was. I believe it was actually, uh, especially with Chris <laughs> Evans saying it. So yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I think it's fine to spoil it. It's been it, whoever is listening to this podcast and hasn't seen Endgame yet. I don't really know uh, yeah, exactly. Kind of I was trying to be vague as I could, but I was just like, just <laughs> in case. Kind of, what 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 is like the biggest stone left unturned for you? Like if you had to just know one thing, like you know, the Russo brothers just stroll. Right into right into your room where you're recording, and you could just ask them one question. I I don't want to ask them anything. I oh, I, I, okay. I don't want to. Wanna... No, it's not that. I don't. They don't have the answers I need. Kevin Feige has the answers I need. Okay, then Kevin Feige. Walks that, that's in. fine because everyone <laughs> tries to go to the Rooster Brothers or the writers. I'm like, they don't have the answers for the MCU as a whole. They're they're just working on their little pieces. But it's got to be the the Loki with the uh, Tesseract. Scene, uh-huh. That they never reference. They don't even show Loki again the rest of the movie. Um, and while I, th- I don't think the Loki TV series will answer that because it's a time traveler and a space traveler. I uh-huh. want to know how Captain America was able to go back and restore everything to the movies we did in fact see. Yeah, I think 
I think my question would be along the same lines, but it would be a little bit more general. I just want to know if like these fractured timelines or these other kind of uh, realities that have been created from the events of Endgame, I just want to know if those are going to play in in any serious way in the future. You know, I could totally see like a, a Disney Plus streaming show maybe playing with this fun sandbox that they created of an alternate timeline, but I want to know if they have any plans of like blowing it up in any big way. You know, like in in 10 years, like in phase five, are we going to have to keep track of like two different timelines when we go to the theater? Well, but but that's the whole point of it is they, sh- they, they, when they sent Cat back, he saw all those branches by putting the stones back. Like they even set that up in the movie. So I want to know, see how he went back. Like when he, like how did he react giving the, the, the soul stone back to the red skull on Vormir? Like we, what, what, what are those, those, that's what I want to know. Cause I don't think there's any other timeline anymore. I think it's all one. It one seems thing. like he would have needed to do something a little bit more cheeky. Like he'd be, he'd be like hiding behind like a boulder. He would just kind of like toss the stone in front of him. And then red skull would just kind of look around and be like, Oh, what, well, how did that get there? Oh man, I'm always dropping the soul yeah. stone. I'm so clumsy. I better go take this and put this back over in the cliff or wherever the soul stone is supposed to be. But that would be hilarious if um, like, cause we're getting that animated kind of what if series on Disney plus that would be great. That would be something great for them to do because it would be kind of comical to see how Cap would return these stones, kind of similar to how Rocket was taking the ether out of Jane. Like, that was a comical moment. So it would be funny to see Cap going back to try to put these stones back where they're supposed to be. And he's like, oh, no, they saw me. I got to put it back. And that that could be that could be humorous. Yeah, and like he, he apparently, at least I said, like, everything he did, made it so the other movies did happen you know he the the test rack didn't get to loki or he was able to get it from loki and put it back i i don't know how that would work simply because he only had the stone and not the box that came in by the end of that so there, there's a lot of little questions but that's really what it is what what, what do you do with that like how like i know marvel's not gonna let those just kind of sit there because as they showed in endgame there in, in infinity war there are pieces throughout the whole 10 11 years that still played up paid off in the end uh, yeah, so I, it, I it's in that. their it's in their best interest for this long running storyline to not get too messy. So uh, I think they'll do their best to kind of sweep up what they can. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, I, I'm not taking it that way. But yes, yeah, they 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 definitely will. Uh, and it looks like, uh, according to the box office reports, it's about 16 million away from the total accumulation of Avatar. Yeah, which is just a uh, just a stone's throw away. I think at this point it's just inevitable. Uh, who knows if it'll cross this summer or if it'll take like a re-release when maybe the next uh, kind of uh, marathon comes to a theater. Uh, but I, I, I mean, Disney wants that headline. They want to be able to call their shareholders on one of their quarterly reports and say, "Oh, we have the top grossing movie of all time." produced by us not just from a studio that we purchased you know or they could say we have like um we have uh 16 million more dollars hooray so uh yeah i it, it'll happen just we don't know when yeah i mean um how many times did avatar get redone several times i think it didn't get like two re- two releases or something like that it, it had at least one for sure at least one yeah but it beat its initial release in all in one go so i mean that's a plus uh but what, what what does being number one mean at the end of the day? Nothing. Still better movie. <laughs> uh, we were talking. I was talking to one of our listeners this week about Avatar, and they they're like, "Oh, I don't know why Avatar gets all the hate it gets." But someone made a good point to him, and he says, "If Avatar is so culturally important, name one line from that movie." <laughs> and he's like, "I can't." I guess that's true. And It'll like, be. In- I'm really interested to see how Avatar will change, like, on the internet landscape. Like, when it just comes to, like, references or memes in general, once we kind of get that trailer for uh, for the second movie. Because I think a lot of people are going to revisit the first Avatar movie once kind of we start to see footage from the next one. Because th- this honestly is just kind of what happens. Like, when a, new, when, I, when a new TV series, or, I mean, like, an old TV series, like, lands on a streaming service for the first time in a while, while or like a a movie lands on like netflix that everybody likes and they finally have a chance to easily watch usually i see it popping back up on like the r slash movies on reddit people talking about it so it just needs it just needs a shot of adrenaline for people to watch it again but there's no guarantee that people are gonna like fall in love with it but it just needs that opportunity 
I don't need to watch it again. I'm fine. I'll just <laughs> We're going to watch it. We've we've already I think we made this promise like a year and a half ago when these movies were all announced that we would go back and rewatch the first Avatar and, Well, you know, I'll, I'll just pretend I saw it and just kind of guess from there. I'll wa- you know what? I'll watch Pocahontas and it's all <laughs> the same thing. Just yeah, okay. Re- replace them with blue people. Uh, Marvel Studios, we mentioned earlier, has um, given us their official return to Hall H uh, on Saturday night, the coveted 5.15 to 6.45 p.m. slot. That mm-hmm. is two, almost two hours. <laughs> yeah, that's a solid slot. They're going to be bringing a lot there. Uh, I've seen people saying that he's going to be bringing back some familiar faces, so the rumors is possibly a, um, a reunion of characters, which would be cool and something we kind of thought could happen. You know, get Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans back up on that stage. The only thing I'm a little worried about is we have D23 coming up, and I'm worried that they're going to like chop the info in half. You know, they're only going to give half of it at Comic-Con and then half of it at D23, and I hope they don't do that. Like, just give everybody, give this top-tier comic book audience all of the news you have. Don't hold anything back for D23. You know, if there's people that are at D23 that, did again, that didn't get a chance to go to Comic-Con, you know, go ahead and maybe share that same footage that well, Hall H got to see at Comic-Con, but just don't hold anything back. That's the, what I'm hoping they don't do. They've never done that before. So, I mean, that's exactly what they did last time. They did both. They were like, D23 was the same thing, just again, like, same footage. But, like, you know, it's hard to leak. It's easier to leak D23 stuff than it is Comic-Con footage for some reason. I mean, that is that is true. Um, and so I, I don't think, I mean, with Marvel Studios literally being 90% of the Hall H panels, like, people involved with them at some point, this is the point where they just steal the show. They're like, who is the biggest winner of Comic-Con this year, Mike? They're, everyone's going to say Marvel by yeah, a long cause, shot. because no one else is there competing unless somebody comes in with just a crazy announcement that no one's ever heard of before. Yeah. But yeah, it's going to be Marvel because they're going to be announcing Phase 4 as far, as far as we know. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be of the caliber of that one big announcement Feige did in, in Hollywood a few years ago where he put up like a literal timeline and logos for all of these movies and you got to see when every single one of them was going to come out. I don't know if it's going to be that itemized but we're definitely going to be seeing uh, official announcements well, for films. Well, if they they have already got the dates uh, locked down, so I mean they're literally just titles away from saying what it is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've got what the next three years I think through twenty twenty two, so they could easily fill in every one of those slots with it with a title. And when they said reunion, I don't think they're going to bring old people back. I think they're going to bring people from the who are going to the new movies going forward. I think that's what we're going to see. Um, they're going to be like, look, here is what we're going, focusing forward. Uh, and here's your returning actors who are getting sequels, Dr. Strange two, black Panther two, captain Marvel two, so on and so forth. I just want to be in, I want to be in there so bad, Mike, I can't see straight now because I know, <laughs> I know that like what's on the line for this is, yeah. is, is potentially some of the biggest news we've, we've actually had, uh, since we were, I think they did that. They didn't do that phase three announcement when we were doing the show, was it? I think that was right before we started recording the podcast. So. Yeah, maybe this could be the first big kind of uh, MCU dump we've ever had on the show. So this is going to be. This is. Oh, there's a lot at stake here for us seeing if we can get into this hall. What's going to go on? We're going to do our best at the ve- at the very worst. Uh, we what we'll do what we always do is we scour the internet for leaked footage and because um, that's really the that's really the exclusiveness that comes out of the hall is the footage. So um, we always do what we can for you here on this on this. We'll, podcast. we'll be but, covering it anyway, no matter if we see it or not ourselves. Yeah. So what's uh what what's your big prediction? What do you th- what's the big show stealer? What's the moment that's going to make Hall H just lose their lose it? Uh, the next Avengers movie and and its title will be the one for me. I think I, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be. Uh, I think it's gonna be probably Fantastic Four. You think so? Mm-hmm. I think it's. I. Th- I think uh, uh, an Avengers announcement is always gonna get a cheer. It's always gonna be excited. Like why not? But it's just another Avengers movie. We've had. We've had a few of those already. They've all been really great. But we've had a few. So I think it's gonna be an announcement of something brand new. And I think it's just too. It's still too fresh for X Men, uh, so it'd probably be Fantastic Four. Well, but I also think it, there's never been a good Fantastic Four movie, so why would people be that excited? Yes, Marvel has it, but like there's still never been a good one, no matter who did the movie. Because Marvel's finally gonna do it right. Yeah, I don't that, know. That's a big stretch. They've got 11 <laughs> years of of good stuff. They they gotta falter somewhere, Mike, and and no one's done a good Fantastic Four yet. I think 
the next Avengers movie without the core Avengers being in it anymore is a huge gamble as well. Um, what do you what do you think they're going to call it? Do you think this is going to be the new Avengers, uh, the Dark Avengers? I think I I don't I think it's I, I honestly have no idea. Maybe Avengers disassembled something completely different, like something mm-hmm. we, we've never even thought of. Um, it, because it's got it's got to focus on the villain. It, I mean, literally all the titles have kind of been villain based, except mm-hmm. for the, except for the first one. Um, so like, what what is what would I mean? Who who would the villain be? Is is my I guess my question over the next thing i i don't know i really don't know but i think i think it'll be a surprise avengers announcement yeah fantastic four is gonna get us excited but like again i'm cautious like we had hopes for that last fantastic four until they changed the trailers colors from red to green and uh-huh. they were like something's wrong here <laughs> what, what went sideways but um i yeah i don't know i think that's gonna be it but you know we could you know i think what we may get definitely is maybe some black widow footage uh and that's gonna, gonna get us into our next topic mike um, with Nick Fury is actually not a part of the film per Samuel L. Jackson, which is oh wow, that's uh, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, but he's he's like a big part of like her her career. Maybe he's lying to us. He lied to us. He said he said Captain Marvel had time travel abilities before that movie came out, and he lied <laughs> so he could be lying very very easily. But he was literally in every Marvel movie this year at some point. I mean, this could be a chance for Black Widow to finally stand apart from Nick Fury. Uh-huh. So I, that could be a, a very um, deliberate story choice. Like, this is going to be her standalone movie. Let's not put any, you know, crutches in there that she's leaned on before. So either way, uh, I think we'll still get Black Widow goodness. I don't think she needs Nick Fury around to be badass. Right, but, but I mean, also at the same time, like, I want to... If they have a flashback of her at all... I wanted to see where she's recruited literally into shield with Nick Fury because he sends her after Tony Stark and Iron Man two. And that's like, you know where we find out she really is black widow. So, um, there, there was a small chance where like, Hey, they could do a scene together, but it doesn't sound like they're going to do it at all yet. So, um, that's fine. It's whatever. We get some, see some footage, maybe an official title. I think it'll be called more than just black widow. So, uh, David Harbor from stranger things. We'll get to see him in it. What his oh role yeah, is. that's right. I forgot that guy was in it. Yeah, is he gonna play the uh, the uh, local town sheriff yet again, or <laughs> or uh, Hellboy? I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe something. Uh, Ghost Rider has picked up Dave Blass, the production designer for other uh, comic book movie shows such as Preacher, uh, Constantine, and The Boys. So uh, I think that's a pretty good get. I really like watching Preacher. Uh, yeah, you, you, I mean, produ- production design in a TV series is a big deal because that's kind of where you have to. That's where you have to stretch those dollars, yeah. and it's also where you have to convince the audience that they're watching something premium. So, um, I mean, The Boys is a premium show. Uh, Preacher was a, a kind of a top tier AMC show. So, yeah. I hope this. I uh, hope this goes well for Ghost Rider. And Constantine's, you know, likes a pretty supernatural stuff, which you know, which Ghost Rider would be in so uh, mm-hmm. seems like a good fit i think i think sounds like a good fit so it means they're, if they got a production designer they're gonna be filming this before you know the end of the year right i mean that sounds like they're ready to go yeah that. i would think so yeah so we'll, we'll check it out on hulu next year however keep don't hold your breath for the defenders showing up anytime soon uh, based on contracts per kevin feige it'll be a while before they can appear in the mcu uh, uh, from, th- from netflix productions <laughs> I think that's fine. I mean, yeah. they're pretty steeped into uh, people's brains because it's not, they're not, they haven't just been one off movies. They've been like hours and hours that people have spent with Daredevil. So I think it's going to take some time to shake them from memory. And I, I don't think any of these people are getting recast um, uh, when they eventually make their return. Uh, they, they had a good run. Uh, I think all these actors are very successful and they'll move on to something else. Uh, so we watched a couple episodes of the most recent slash last season of Jessica Jones. Mm -hmm. And, um, it still has that great Jessica Jones vibe, you know, very familiar settings, uh, same characters. I think we watched the first three episodes and it, I don't know if it cranks up, but man, it has started off so slow. Like, uh, I was expecting maybe some sort of hint at maybe what a greater villain was going to be. Cause we saw in the trailers that there was going to be some sort of mastermind, like kind of pulling these strings, trying to get at Jessica. Haven't seen like a glimpse or a hint of him yet. Um, you know, still ch- there was like a whole episode dedicated to Hellcat, um, which I thought was maybe less than interesting. Uh, so I don't know if the, 
if it, it thinks I, if it cranks back up or not. I but. know you're in for a, so, uh, several treats on the on the back half of this. Oh, okay. Um, so one of my friends, um, Jeremy, he watched. Uh, he liked season one, did not like season two, and he's like nine in the season three, and he's like, I really like it a lot better than he's he likes season two, and he did not dig season two at all. Like he stopped watching it. It's how much he didn't dig two. So. Oh wow. So he said it, it, he really likes three, and um, I know the ending of it, so I, I I know you're gonna enjoy yourself, Mike, if you if you stick with it. All right. Well, hopefully I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll finish it and I'll report back. But you won't need to watch it on the Marvel Cinematic Universe if you don't wanna, <laughs> if you don't want to watch it with that. That's fine. You can you can wait it out for the next Jessica Jones appearance uh, in there. Star Wars: The Mandalorian gave us a uh, there's a new there's a new comic convention that gone on this week and they are have confirmed that the robot we saw in the trailers is in fact not IG-88, but IG-11. Uh, uh, it's a di- it's a different trash can, people. Yeah, so I I honestly have no idea who IG-11 is, 11 is overall, but um, it's not the IG-88, which we've seen in um, he he looks- in Return of the Jedi. Uh, I don't know why I would say he. It's a robot. Uh, this character kind of looks like an espresso machine. Uh, so if I had to describe him, he looks like he can make you coffee. He's got a lot of little uh, little red dots and sensors and little nozzles that come out. Like, yeah, you could you could probably get something out of him. But uh, per that leaked footage we saw, um, uh, you know, from from earlier this year, he looks really cool the way he spins around and fires and does everything. So it's uh, I'm excited to see kind of where this where this goes. Um, yeah. Speaking of Star Wars, I feel like we got to be getting another trailer here soon for for this. Uh, not for the Mandalorian, but yes, oh. a Mandalorian trailer, yes for sure. But also mainline Star Wars too that's coming out just later this year. You know, yeah, that's right. The Rise of Skywalker, I believe it is. Yeah, we're only we're like only like six months away, and we've only had like one trailer. Yeah, um, they usually ramp up, I guess, in the fall, don't they? For those, um, we have to go do a trailer diagnose like when the releases were. But I think it's after Comic Con because I don't think Star Wars is at San Diego this year. Is are well, they? I- I haven't seen any panels, so yeah. I guess the next best guess would be uh, D twenty three. Maybe they do Marvel here, Star Wars there. Yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a good split. Yeah, and because uh, Disney's ramping up on their own stuff, so they have their own things. But like, if you were to pick your nerd fandom and and divide and conquer, you put Marvel at Comic Con and Disney D twenty three. So <laughs> that works out. Like we mentioned at the top of the show, The Flash has lost uh, directors John Daly and Jonathan Goldstein. What? Oh, my God. Are they going to make the Gambit movie? <laughs> what? Everybody is leaving for nothing oh. that's getting made. Oh, no, well, for things that aren't getting made? I, I don't yeah. know what you're going with here, but that's fine. Um, they they did uh, – they wrote – was it Homecoming? Spider-Man Homecoming, actually. So, you know, they had high hopes for him, but apparently – um, Ezra Miller wanted a darker take on the Flash. They were doing the lighthearted take, and now they've had to hire someone else to meet in the middle with Andy Muschietti, who did the It movies, and has stepped in as a director. And they've uh, hired uh, Christina Hodson, who did Birds of Prey script, to write the script from scratch. So well, they're that, starting over again. That could definitely take a darker turn if you're getting the director for It. I guess they will be freed up after Chapter 2 comes out. Um Man, it's been so long since we've seen Ezra Miller on the big screen as Flash. It makes me wonder that if this one, if this version of the film doesn't take off, I feel like there's a big enough window to where they could just recast Ezra Miller as whoever they want and make whatever movie that they want. So uh, this might be their last chance before um, maybe people don't care about that version of the Flash anymore. You know, they 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 still care. That's the real surprise. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sure there's a couple stragglers out there. Yeah, the the people who want the Zack Snyder cut uh, release of <laughs> Justice League still. I mean, I, I think we talked about you know Ezra Miller's contract like officially expiring like a month or so ago. So maybe it sounds like he, they've renegotiated it. Um, he is a big draw in their um, was it Fantastic Beast movies uh, as mm-hmm. one of the main actors. So uh, Warner Brothers wants to keep him around. So like, hey, maybe we'll. They they've renegotiated that to make it better, and he gets more maybe more say. It sounds like in what the movie's going to be, at at the end of the day. But now also, to me, it sounds like they don't really need to connect it to Justice League. They can kind of do whatever they want because mm-hmm. all the other movies are doing individual things. Like Aquaman didn't even hardly reference 
Justice League. <laughs> Maybe all of these individual characters will all get together for Justice League 2, and they'll be like, you look familiar. Who are yeah. you? It's like, oh, we've never met before. I do remember a fever dream I had about 10 years ago, though, <laughs> that you were in. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we all we all got drunk at that bar, remember, where we, we fought that I'm, dude? <laughs> Maybe, maybe like Doctor Fate or like some other like magic or mystic user in DC could just be used as the explanation of why the Justice League movie existed to begin with. Maybe it was just like some sort of illusion that got turned into a movie. Mm-hmm. We heard you guys had the. Your, is your mom saying Martha too? Is that Flash <laughs> saying Mar- Mar- Martha? No. All right, that's fine. I mean, I, I, this movie needs to. They need to make. They need to get the next movie off the ground in terms of like the larger uh, uh, characters because. We've got forever until Shazam, two. They haven't even give us a date for that. Uh, Aquaman's really far away. Wonder Woman's like middle of next year, right? So we're less than a year away from Wonder Woman two now. So uh, what what do we have to look forward to other than Birds of Prey maybe and, and the Joker, which are yeah. kind of both kind of risky takes. So oh, a Suicide Squad two eventually, I guess, with James Gunn. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what's going on. Uh, the Batman uh, movie was still always working on this with Robert Pattinson <laughs> as 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 the Batman. Uh, have uh, looking to get Vanessa Kirby, uh, the sister uh, in Hobbs and Shaw movie that's coming out. You know, you've seen those trailers. Oh uh, yes, the uh, the very extensive trailers. Yeah, the newest one's the best one, by the way. The sec- the the newest trailer. It's even more wild than the one before. I'm like, how can they make it more wild? Well, they pulled it off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, she's rumored to be Selena Kyle and Catwoman in the upcoming film. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know much about her acting capability. I don't recall if she's been in any of the other Fast and the Furious movies, but she was even in, if she she was in Mission Impossible Fallout, uh, with, oh yeah, she was like that uh, kind of like bad guy. Kind she of was like, like she was she was like uh, in like she was like in a club and she's like leading like she's in charge of like this crime syndicate or whatever. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, sure, I could see her being a uh, Selena Kyle. Yeah, uh, she's she's blonde. So uh, got that going, and she she's she's good in action scenes. I'll give her that. She's good in action scenes. So if they want to do that, that's fine. But uh, keep keep going for it. The Batman. Add as many things as you want in there. It's gonna start to sound like one of those Arkham games where everybody's in <laughs> it, and you got they get, each get a scene. They get they get a, they get a scene. But um, speaking of uh, Mission Impossible Fallout, which had Henry Cavill, apparently. Henry Cavill and Christopher McQuarrie pitched a Man of Steel movie that tied into Green Lantern. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, Warner Brothers was not interested in any of their pitches. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Christopher McQuarrie, I guess, uh, could be a little different since he's kind of a creative. But I'm not saying Henry Cavill isn't a creative person. I don't really know him personally. I don't know if he's directed or produced anything out there. But when I imagine Henry Cavill being involved with it, did he just like walk into the room with Christopher McQuarrie and just like, hey, remember this guy Superman? This is the idea I have for his Superman movie. Well, chances are Henry Cavill's like, this is what I feel I would do as Superman. It makes sense for my character is my guess. Like they went to him, McCoy was like, "Hey, you've been Superman in like two and a half movies. What do you, what do you think?" <laughs> um, I love the idea of Henry Cavill possibly being, you know, a huge comic book nerd for Superman. You know, just like this big like beefcake, just like sitting like on his bed, just like reading Superman comics. That idea makes me really happy if that exists. Yeah. Well, I mean, they pitch it, and apparently Warner Brothers wants McQuarrie to fix their broken ideas and doesn't want anything original, was what he said <laughs> in his tweet. So, uh, doesn't sound like they have anything, uh, anything's moving forward on, on the Superman front, sadly, if you're holding out for Superman. But if you really want your, your Henry Cavill beefcake, well then, by God, we've got some photos for you. <laughs> by God. In, in the Witcher photos, the official release photos, uh, we've got one here um, showing... Uh, the the backside with the little the wolf the bird and it looks like maybe a starfish logo i don't know i've not played the witcher i'm not gonna pretend i'm i'm a knowledgeable on this yeah we haven't played the games we don't know anything about the books that the games are based on Mm -hmm. but i do know what the witcher looks like because i've seen the box art yeah and damn if henry cavill doesn't look uh, just uh, uh, dashing in this uh, kind of uh, Middle Earth, medieval esque outfit. Um, I don't know if this was real outrage or just some people having fun, but I saw some pe- com- people possibly complaining about the butt chin and the Witcher in the video games not having the butt chin. So I thought that was just an out- an outrageous uh, complaint to have to begin with. 
What? Uh, but what? but damn. <laughs> but doesn't I mean th- this just looks badass. He looks. I want to see this dude like fight witches. I don't know if that's what he does. Is that what the Witcher does, or is he a witch himself? I don't. I don't. I don't think it has be... anything to do with. He's a he's a, <laughs> he's a monster slayer. Uh, okay, I'd lo- well either way. I want to see this dude kill monsters. Like I think he looks better as this than he does as Superman, and I thought he even looked great as Superman. So I think Henry Cavill is just a good looking dude that looks good in any costume you put him in. Yeah, I mean this honestly looks like something. You know, my first thought is like if you if you take off the the face, it's like a Game of Thrones outfit, like quality mm-hmm. outfit, and then um. I was like, and then the the next picture we have is um, actress Anna Cholatra as the character Yennefer, one I think is love interest in this. And I'm like, these look very Game of Thronesy, like where they're taking uh-huh. these photos and filming that. But like, yeah, this maybe this fills that Game of Thronesy void in our heart as as Ma- the show's gone now. So yeah, well, I mean, the show's gonna be gone. They're gonna they're gonna bring back you know those prequel series or one off or offshoot series or whatever. Amazon's gonna have uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, Netflix is going to have The Witcher. It's going to be interesting to see what really pulls out ahead of the other ones Mm. because they're all getting tons of money poured into them for sure. So that'll be a fun kind of a three-way battle because it it seems like The Witcher is going to be the first of those three to come out. So uh, that'll be our first testing of the waters to see if people want more fantasy sword play. if they can do more action in this one than the because this one's based on a video an action based video game right a role playing action based video game if there's action in this that's what's going to do it because uh-huh. like game of thrones is very politically charged and not actiony uh lord of the rings is more exploratory across the middle earth and rather than actiony so uh I, I, hopefully that's what i'm hoping for a lot of, a lot of action a lot, a lot of action in this but it looks good i'll give them that uh, Netflix is also pouring tons of money, along with DC, into an adaptation of the critically acclaimed Sandman series by Neil Gaiman. Um, they've been trying to make this for years. As, as long as I can remember, someone's been trying to ad- adapt Sandman into something. And it looks yeah, like I, Netflix finally it, got got it. Yeah, it seems like for the longest time it was trying to be adapt as possibly a film. And then uh, uh, it makes sense that a story like Sandman, which is in a comic book, might do better uh, on the smaller screen, serialized, kind of like, um, oh man, I can't even remember the name of the show. The last comic book show that Netflix adapt, um, the one the, by My Chemical Romance guy. What's Umbrella his Academy is what you're saying. Umbrella about. Academy, that's what it was. I just kept thinking black. Like, <laughs> What's the blackness of that show? Uh, I mean, I wonder if this big, uh, I heard that this was a, a very expensive deal to make. And I wonder if maybe that was on the heels of good omens, which was another kind of Neil Gaiman, um, uh, Terry Pratchett kind of connection over there at Amazon. So Neil Gaiman, he, it, it's his time to shine. It's his time to fill well, his wallet for sure. He was, I mean, he was doing that. Uh, what was he? Do you say, do you mention American gods? On, uh, no, I didn't. But you just did, Chris. American Gods, and then he <laughs> he did a bunch of Doctor Who episodes, which won a bunch of awards as well. Uh, so he he's he's just he's he's slaying it out there, man. Um, but they have Alan Heinberg, who wrote the Wonder Woman script, um, uh-huh. to, as a showrunner. Uh, and in uh, very hesitant news to announce, uh, Neil Gaiman and David Goyer are the executive producers. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was. I didn't like seeing Goyer's name, but I felt a little better knowing that he was just an executive producer. So that just means that more than likely he's probably just going to read the scripts and give notes. I don't think he'll actually be in the writer's room with the writers. So I'm glad that there's a different person in charge of all of that. So maybe they just want Goyer's name attached to it. So when they put out that first trailer, they could say from the minds of like the dark Knight and, you know, just list his successful movies. Oh, so, well, yeah, <laughs> I because mean, like so we've always talked about Goyer. Is he like just a mixed bag? Like w- yeah. what he's, he's got some good things on here. It's uh, like, what drugs was he doing or what drugs wasn't he doing when he he made those good films. <laughs> Let's go back to doing more of that, Goyer. It, it, exactly. Like he, Blade, Blade 2, but then, you know, Blade Trinity, no thank you, Batman Begins, sets it up. Uh, we're, we'll find out his newest movie he's written this year is Terminator Dark Fate. So we're going to we're gonna see what that looks like at the end of the year. Um, but, I mean, he's just kind of all over the place, and especially with TV shows. Uh, right now, he's a producer on Krypton, which I hear is knocking it out of the park. So what, what, what do we do? What do we do here? Maybe he's just great at giving notes and maybe he shouldn't be writing the scripts anymore. I don't know. Brad, but, uh, 
I, I, I haven't got around to reading uh, Salmon yet. I have the first trade. My brother was nice enough to give it to me as a present for Christmas a few years ago. And it's just been sitting on my shelf, and I just haven't got around to it. So once I saw this news, the first thing I did was walk over to my bookshelf, and I took the trade right off the bookshelf, and I put it right on my nightstand. I was like, I'm going to make myself look at this every single day before I go to bed to, to remind myself to read it. Because I've only ever he heard amazing things about Sandman. I mean, once you start talking to comic book people, and you ask them about about things that you should read you know once the conversation leaves the orbit of superheroes like it only takes seconds before someone recommends sandman to you uh, i don't even know the lineage of the books at this point i i'm sure it's splintered off into other stories uh by now but uh the mainline sandman story i'm i'm looking forward to jumping into it yeah there's um well how many books were there? i remember the first the first trade's called preludes and nocturnes if i remember mm -hmm. correctly that is the indeed the one that i can turn around right now and look right at you look at um and i'm pretty sure um it's like eight issues i believe if i can remember correctly as well uh, but it includes two of my favorite stories. I'm, I'm, if I remember again, if I remember correctly, there's one called A Hope in Hell, um, which uh, is where it, it, Sandman walks into hell, and the devil's like, "You're in my territory now. Like I'm gonna keep you." And um, the only way he the, the, he gets at, he like he he shows his power over the devil himself in this this book, which is fantastic and there's one about a, a diner which is my favorite issue uh and it's really messed up but it's really cool but uh I, if, if there's eight issues in the first trade and there's 11 episode order maybe maybe they're gonna just do the first trade you know right out the gate without having to work on on the other collections as they go yeah. forward as of right now netflix has a good track record for adapting uh comic books so yeah. uh uh, this one is very expensive. They'll put a lot of money into it. Uh, man, it, uh, Netflix is gonna sink or swim in these next five years because they have a lot of a lot of expensive uh, uh, adaptions of IP coming out. Yeah, and the same is only seventy five issues. It's a finite series, and you know, at the end of the day, so um, that's going to uh, um, be interesting to see. You know, if they they can do the whole thing by the end of mm -hmm. it, and how how much they do it. Now, little do people know. Um, the show Lucifer on Fox, which was picked up by Netflix for its last two seasons, is a spinoff of Sandman um, in the comic book world. So it will I will they tie them together? I don't know. Um, but there's uh, also in the comic books there's another person who took over um, the character Dream. I, I forget his name, but this one looks like it's going to focus on the main character Morpheus, which is the main one from the series you're going to be reading. So. Uh -huh. Um, I'm, I'm excited to, I'm excited to see this. I'm, I'm very excited, but also with this news, it comes a little bit of other news. I didn't put in here as a topic. Netflix is apparently pulling back on how much they're spending on original programming to <laughs> focus on quality instead of quantity going forward because of all the competitive, uh, I guess they <laughs> choices coming up. I just like to imagine them hitting like the buy now button that Amazon has on all of these properties and some executive just got a little too uh, click happy and like, oh crap, they looked at their bank account. Oh, we can't keep doing this anymore. Yeah. All right, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to dial it back. We are out of money. We need more investors before we can buy, you know, the Power Rangers, which I, that would, that would be a headline that I would not be surprised to read. Netflix uh, buys Power Rangers to adapt the miniseries or like, I was like, okay, that'll probably happen. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's probably one, I mean, it's one of those things where they're just buying the first thing like you know when you click google and you're like uh, i'm feeling lucky and you just get the first result <laughs> they're buying yeah. everything but they're like oh we found out we can get the same thing but cheaper if we just look a little harder so mm. uh yeah it looks like they're gonna be reeling back stuff but this might be the biggest most expensive show made uh by dc entertainment not by netflix g going forward this may be the last of like their big i don't know announcements that are like very common because like the witcher seem to be big this is big um what what else is Netflix? We been had doing? Uh, we had Avatar, yeah. uh, The Last Airbender, uh, yeah. Cowboy Bebop. Lots of things are getting adapted, and weren't they adapting? Um, there aren't they working on something from Michael Brian Bendis or Brian Michael Bendis, or is that Amazon? Oh, uh, that's a good question. It's probably. It's, I I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if they are anymore or not. Because I think wasn't that a wasn't that like a Seth Rogen attachment also, where they wanted to do. Um, what was it? Invincible? Is that what it's called? Oh, that's 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 Mark Miller. Um, Mark Miller. Okay. Netflix Mark bought Miller, Miller World, so they own that already. So yeah, uh, Bendis uh, had his show Powers was on the Sony Network a couple years ago, but yeah, uh, yeah, Netflix uh, pulling out all the stops, and now they're gonna stop a little bit. So 
Pump it on brakes. And now for Mike's favorite news of the week, uh, <laughs> the anime corner. We're going back to Akira. Uh, Mike doesn't think it holds up as well uh, as it did uh, when it came out, but it, the anime is getting a 4K remaster release next April. So wow. if you want to check out all those hand-drawn pixels. Uh, from I the- mean, the the animation in the movie is uh, astonishing. Yeah. So uh, there's no reason why anyone should shy away from watching it, it just for the animation itself. Um but I, I saw a little bit of this news and I was surprised uh, myself because I'm not any sort of like big anime nerd that knows all the ins and outs of every every movie that ever uh-huh, comes out. But uh-huh, I, yeah, I, did, right. <laughs> I didn't know Akira was based on a manga. And apparently um, that came to uh, that came through in the news this week. And I was like, uh, oh, OK, maybe I'm, that's what they'll be adapting for the film, the manga. Well, that, that's what I said when we announced the movie, I was like, they're, they're, Akira, the movie was second, the, the anime film was secondary to the manga. So that's why they can change it for, for the movie when they announce it with Taika Waititi. Well, but, Chris, this is the moment where you scroll through <laughs> all of the audio and then you put in the I told you so moment right but, here. Now, that's fine. <laughs> I don't have to do that because everyone else who listens to the show will be like, he did tell you that. Uh, but that's fine because they are making a new anime series based on the original Akira manga uh, going forward. So they will sit closer to that original story with points that were not in the main film that you saw. So maybe this could alleviate some of those uh, concerns you had after rewatching it. I, I would wonder how like the uh, like the standard mainline Japanese audience thinks about this because uh, anime adaptions and releases and re-releases and remakes just happen all the time and without reason and they'll just make random one-off movies they'll reboot series they'll bring it back randomly change the whole storyline so uh, it's kind of a pedestrian over there for them to be doing something like this but in our world when something gets kind of like brought back it's kind of a big it's kind of like big news like oh man they're making more akira they're going to turn it into a series uh so oh, i know they remade something but the original <laughs> still exists you're fine yeah uh so it makes me think um maybe this isn't a is this a strategic attempt to maybe uh uh jump back on the hype of the the well, film that's going to be coming out or is this strictly based on like the anniversary of the of the classic movie coming around i'm not really sure my what i have seen when this normally happens it means that the live action movie is going to tell an entirely different story than the than the uh, manga series is doing like mm-hmm. the movie that the live action movie is going to be way way different so they're using this as an opportunity to retell the manga story as it is in an animated form um, that people will consume a little easier because have you ever tried to read uh, a manga book? The um, left, the right to left thing throws me off after reading. Oh, does, that, books. does that freak you? It, it, uh, when I get back into them, it, it takes a little bit to get used to. Uh, the nice thing about manga and it being everywhere and it, it's extremely easy to pirate so all you have to do when you want to read something is just basically google it and there's usually just some sort of knockoff website that has like uploaded the jpegs and if it's an and if it's a little bit nicer they've put it into like a slideshow function so uh if you just want to go just test out just reading manga in general just go google it and you'll mm-hmm. find it for free somewhere but yeah it takes a little bit to get used to <laughs> yeah it, it, it really because every time i go to barnes and Noble, i'll pick up a dragon ball uh, a, a Shonen Jump Dragon Ball one and try to read it. I'm like, what in the world am I doing? Like, I, I feel I feel backwards walking out of the store by the time I've, I've read it. But, um, <laughs> but with that, the, yeah, the, the manga coming out and all that fun stuff, they could definitely uh, tell their whole story. Because I think what was that show that you like? Was it Full Metal Alchemist? Um, oh yeah, that show. That that show. The the anime was produced faster than the than the manga so they outpaced them and then they had to start telling like a brand new story and then people didn't like that brand new story and they really liked the manga so they went back and they made brotherhood to adapt closer to the manga and then yeah. people liked that but i was already like 10 years older by this point and i was just kind of like out of that scene and i was like i can't go back yeah. and dedicate my life to rewatching full metal alchemist because they're right like now. here's the full metal alchemist uh, manga here's the anime at the same time and they don't match up and then they're like Wait a minute, here's Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. It's not a sequel, it's just a retelling of the manga more truthfully. Yeah, and then the first couple episodes kind of run the same uh, direction a little bit. And then it gets even more confusing because the original series was really popular, so they made like standalone movies. And it's like, well, where do these movies fall in line? It's, it, it gets very yeah. confusing. You, need the, you absolutely need the internet to be an anime fan because it's the only way you can keep track of all this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Because I was—I didn't know brother. I thought Brotherhood was a sequel. I was like, "Yep," uh, and it's not. It's—it's it's the same thing, just told more 
tr- uh, I guess uh, <laughs> so, along those lines. So what we're saying is basically subscribe to the superhero slate so you can hear us struggle <laughs> to understand what anime is every single week. Look, look, I watch my Dragon Ball Super episodes every Sunday morning after they air on Saturday night. I am well aware of what's going on in Dragon Ball World if you want to. And also Attack on Titans ending with next season. I don't know if you need oh. that or not. I'm okay with that. I'll wait till it's all done, and then yep. I'll just uh, watch them Cause, all. Because you watch recommended these... that to me whenever I first watched it, and I was like, now now I'm ahead of you, I think. so." Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've only seen the first season. Very fun premise, uh, very whiny characters. That's how I would describe it to people. Oh, they totally are. And you know, <laughs> I, I, it's it's going to blow your mind. Like the, the That show un, the unfolds so many answers that you didn't know you had. I'm... Yeah, and, that's, and it's another great example of that show also running concurrently with the, with the manga. So I don't know how that's been difficult. I think maybe nowadays they do their best to try to try to organize with the creators and the writers, kind of like they did with Game of Thrones a little bit. Uh, but hell if I know, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we're, 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 we're wigging it here at this point. So, uh, But that's our anime corner for the week. Mike, our news shows, we're done. The notes are done. We've wrapped it up. We're here. If people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at? This well, week? they can they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram and Twitter, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where can they find you? Find me on Twitter, Valdan, V A L D I N, or Instagram, Valdan87, or head over to Comic UI. If uh, people want to listen to our Spider Man Far From Home review, it's in the feed, or just go to Instagram, or not Instagram, go to, to well, anywhere on the Google and just search Superhero Slate Far From Home review. It'll, it'll pop up. If people wanted to listen to that and more, Mike, where can they find everything else at? Well, all you have to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues that we put our show and to get our awesome show notes. So if you want to see that screenshot of IG-11 and see what see how much coffee he can make you, or if you want to see those Henry Cavill uh, screenshots because he is the cosplay master, all you got to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com, and you can get us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and more. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch, 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 merch at SuperheroSlate.com. I sound like a YouTuber. Make sure yeah. you smash that like button and head on over to the merch corner. Uh, right. Buy our S- stuff. <laughs> SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. Reach out and let us know uh, if you're digging the show, if you want us to talk about any specific topics, if you want to recommend any animes or, I don't know, board games. We play board games too. We like all types of nerdy stuff. Reach out and let us know. Uh, If we have any really annoying mannerisms that we have just gotten used to over the last four years and we think that we're just the perfect host that you've ever heard of before, Nope. but there's one thing that one of us do that drives you crazy, let us know uh, and we'll write a post-it note like I do sometimes and I'll put it right (laughs) on the screen when we're recording so I don't say something stupid. So uh, reach out, let us know. Uh, If you want to be a super fan of the Superhero Slate, all you got to do is share the show with a friend. Share the show with a buddy, and we will be here every week. And stay tuned. Make make sure you subscribe because the biggest show of the year, our Comic Con special, is coming just right around the corner, Chris. That's right. It's uh, I mean, it's gonna be here before we. We normally take a summer break, and that's what's been throwing me off. I'm like, I need a summer break, but we're gonna double down this year on Super Ghost Light Podcast, and yeah, uh, I'm I'm very very excited. And uh, again, if anyone has any <laughs> trips for tips for traveling or anything for me, I would love those because I'm. I'm getting anxious in a good way about all this stuff. So I'm um, very, very excited. All right. We'll catch you guys next week. All right. Adios. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, now I'm starting to mentally prepare of what I want to wear at Comic-Con because uh, you're you were basically in it all day. And it's like you have like total openness to just wear the nerdiest stuff that you own.